Hey friends, welcome back to my channel, a channel we've discussed lost media many, many times on. And if you, my friend, are a connoisseur of the mediums that are lost, then you probably already know that they can kind of vary in levels of horrifying. Or they can be not horrifying at all, that's just... It's just kind of a mixed bag. Today we're gonna to be talking about the more horrifying ones. Today on Sakura Stardust, we're taking a look at some of the darkest Japanese lost media topics that I've personally come across. In the early days of the Japanese internet, a mysterious and disturbing mp3 file spread throughout various web pages. And while the mp3 file itself is unable to be recovered in recent years, it's very well remembered today. Though it's not exactly remembered fondly. Rather, it's memorable because of how well it freaked people out. Chibi Monoko-chan is among the most long-running anime in Japan. Based on its equally long-running 1986 manga, it began airing in 1990 and new episodes are being produced to this very day. The series is lighthearted, based upon the author's childhood in Showa-era suburban Japan, and has become a part of generations of childhoods over its almost 35-year run now. If you've never heard of Chibi Madoko-chan before, all you need to know is that it's an anime heavily associated with nostalgia and innocence. Sometime in the late 90s, around the same time as the launch of Tuchan, and about eight years into the run of the anime, an audio file seemingly related to Chibi Madoko-chan started being passed around. One that the majority found highly disturbing. How so? This post recalls what was heard. The audio begins with the titular Madoko screaming in pain. Madoko's older sister is then heard desperately calling Madoko's name and shouting as well followed by Madoko's mother doing the same. The clip then ends with Madoko shouting in agony once again, this time more aggressively, before the audio ultimately goes silent. Those who recall the clip swear that the audio was the actual voice actors themselves. They were apparently too authentic to be impressions. It is to be inferred by the listener that something horrible is happening to Madoko and her mother and sister are helplessly looking on, unable to stop or help. Interestingly enough, this is not the only dark piece of lost media involving this anime. A lost chapter from the original manga, one with surreal and disturbing visuals unlike the original art style, was serialized one time before being excluded from the official volume that it should have been included within. While scans of the chapter did eventually surface online, many assume that this chapter was just a creepy rumor or hoax. Now, to this very day, the origin of the Screaming Madoko audio and why it exists in the first place remains unknown. It's not even known where this audio was originally shared before it proceeded to spread elsewhere. Some claim to have come across it on Tuchan in the late 90s. Others claim the audio was on Nico Nico Doga, a popular video site, at some point as well. Over the years, many have recalled this audio. Too many for it to simply be an urban legend. Anytime a Madoko chan MP3 file is brought up online, there is often someone responding who remembers hearing it, often referring to it as the one with the screaming or recalling the same details of the mom and sister being in there as well. Some recall coming across the MP3 file when browsing the internet on their flip phones in the late 90s. Many Japanese flip phones already had this feature among many others that wouldn't take off in the West until years later. I'd imagine hearing that kind of audio on a flip phone, especially out in public, would be especially memorable. On top of that, if most people did access this MP3 file through a flip phone, those flip phones are likely not around anymore. I mean, how many of you guys still have your old flip phones lying around somewhere? I mean, mine are long gone, I think. The testimony claiming that the audio was on NND does allow for the possibility of this file existing online still, as it would need to be saved to be uploaded elsewhere like that. While many recognize the voices in the audio as that of the original voices of the characters themselves, there have been various theories as to how this audio came about. The first being that it consists of edited clips from the anime itself. While sophisticated editing software was not commonplace in the late 90s, this could have been achieved by strategically combining clips onto a cassette tape. 
These parody tapes, a precursor to the Mad videos that would later become popular in the 2000s, were passed around and shared by hand in the 80s and 90s. While not confirmed, many believe that the audio is from a Mad cassette or VHS that made its way online. While this audio remains lost, online users have found clips from the Madoko-chan anime that sound like they could make something like this if pieced together. Here's a recreation created solely with audio clips from an episode within Season 1. Now, the original Madoko-chan MP3 could be completely different. When or if that original file is found will be what ultimately determines that. Zumu in Asa, or Zoom in Morning, was a popular morning variety show that aired on Nippon Television for a long time, every weekday morning from 1979 to 2011. The show itself was meant to serve as a positive start to the viewer's day, complete with cute mascot giveaways and special features filmed away from the studio. It was during one of these special features, a section meant to predict the weather in a specific area, that a disturbing incident had occurred. According to online accounts, during a 1988 broadcast of Zoom In, a reporter was in front of Ohori Pond in Fukuoka, giving one of the aforementioned weather relay reports. During this broadcast, a motionless body is seen floating in the background, visible in the corner of the screen and captured without anyone noticing. The reporter, upon turning to the pond and noticing the body, screams and the camera abruptly shifts to the filming of the body itself as well as the people later attempting to recover it from the pond. While footage of the broadcast itself was nowhere to be found online, this incident was mentioned by many internet users over the years, most notably on forums. The accounts began in the early 2000s, with among the earliest found being in 2004. Some claim that the show was cut short abruptly after the reporter screamed, and the program acted like nothing had happened following this incident. Others claim that the broadcast continued on, shifting the focus on the body in the lake. Because Zoom In was broadcasted on a variety of networks throughout Japan, it's possible that both testimonies are correct and that some networks just cut to something else. Furthermore, it's been stated that no details were ever shared regarding the person's identity or what had occurred prior to the discovery of the body. Online users made various attempts over the years in finding this lost broadcast footage, or even just a mention of the incident online anywhere. Incident reports in Ohori Park or in Fukuoka as a whole were also looked into. No such occurrences were ever found. Just like the Chibi Madoko MP3, this piece has an abundance of recollections online, but no physical evidence backing it up. Listings for media similar to the reports were eventually found, however. Specifically, this 1988 drama special titled Tuesday Suspense Theater, The Zoom In Morning Murder Case. This was a one-shot only airing one time in November of 1988. Due to its obscurity and single airing, the special itself remains completely lost. Not even still images from the episode have been found, with the only thing proving its existence to begin with being a listing on the Japanese TV drama database's webpage. While the details of when it aired are provided, there is no synopsis or plot details. Still, the air date and title are extraordinarily noteworthy. Perhaps the broadcast incident was a scripted element of this one-shot drama, and those who saw this part of the drama misremembered it as a real zoom-in broadcast. It's worth noting that Tuesday Suspense Theater aired at night, specifically at 9 p.m., a Tuesday night. While Zoom In, the real Zoom In, aired at 7 a.m. on weekdays. The drama one-shot itself being based on the actual broadcast incident was also considered as a possibility, however. And then there was the additional possibility of the news broadcast simply being a hoax. Maybe, despite so many online accounts, this news broadcast didn't exist at all. Maybe it was the product of misremembering details and online rumors convoluting things further. All speculation came to a halt on October 16th of 2021. 
This was the date that the zoom-in broadcast, the real actual broadcast, was uploaded online, proving it to be real and marking it as found. しかし、この現場でカメラは生々しい水死体の映像を捉えていた。え、今朝6時40分頃、え、通行人が、え、年配の方らしき遺体が、え、水に浮かんでいるのを発見しました。え、現在現場検証が行われているんですが、まだ
The match was immediately halted and multiple attempts to resuscitate Misawa began. First with a doctor in attendance, then by paramedics as they arrived at the venue. Misawa was rushed to Hiroshima University Hospital but was pronounced dead hours later due to a spinal dislocation. The news was devastating in the pro wrestling community. The entire match was filmed, intended to be released. Though none of this professional footage has seen the light of day, aside from a clip of the resuscitation attempts. This clip was released to news outlets, though Noah had no intention of releasing anything else in order to respect Misawa's memory. Photos of the suplex itself, from start to finish, were published in Japanese magazines. Shortly following the incident, amateur footage from the audience was released by a YouTube user named Kimidori3 Takoyaki. This user uploaded two separate videos of the match, one of Misawa's entrance before the match began and another of the resuscitation attempts after the match itself. This user has confirmed that they caught the match itself on camera but will not release that out of respect to Misawa. These wishes should be respected and this user should not be contacted regarding this topic. Mitsuharu Misawa remains a respected and beloved figure in the wrestling community. He left behind a wife and two children. For the sake of his family, and everyone out there who loves Misawa, I feel this lost media should remain lost. Antonio Inoki was another renowned Japanese wrestler. Inoki had an extensive career in wrestling and martial arts, being recognized by the WWF among their heavyweight champions and fighting Muhammad Ali in 1976. During the 1980s, Inoki was at the height of his career, particularly within New Japan Pro Wrestling of which he had founded. Now, Big Van Vader was an American wrestler, known for his size and stature. Vader and Inoki faced off in Vader's NJPW debut. Inoki, seemingly unstoppable at this point, was basically a god among wrestlers. Vader was depicted as the secret weapon of his manager Takeshi Kitano, yes, that Takeshi Kitano, but he didn't seem intimidating to the crowd within the sold-out arena. It was assumed that Inoki would prevail and that Vader was some kind of one-off villain. Well, Vader ended up swiftly defeating Inoki in only two minutes, breaking Inoki's nine-year winning streak. Vader completely obliterated Inoki, who was the hero of everyone in that audience. Because Vader was a non-Japanese wrestler that had literally just been introduced, people were mad. So mad, in fact, that a full-blown riot had broken out in the sumo hall where the event was held. People trashed the venue, breaking things, setting their seat cushions on fire, and even throwing the inflamed cushions at Vader himself. And uh, when I beat him in two minutes, they got pissed off legitimately. And they were rumbling and grumbling, and then they lit their... They, they sit on pillows and they lit them on fire and started throwing them at the ring at me. And, wow. So it got pretty scary. By the time the riot was finished, the whole venue was in shambles and Vader had to be removed before anyone physically harmed him. Due to this incident, the sumo hall had banned New Japan until 1989. The match itself was caught on camera and shown on TV. Photos of the riot itself exist as well. This leads many to believe that footage of the riot itself exists. While the existence remains unconfirmed as of right now, it's yet another infamous lost media topic. Air and Canon are visual novel games later adapted into anime created by the Osaka-based studio Ki. Created during a time when visual novels were incredibly popular, these two especially saw success. Ki has produced 18 visual novels since 1999 and has even worked on a few anime. While their works are typically suited for general audiences, the first two, Canon and Air, were made for adults. Despite the mature subject matter of the final product, it has been rumored that darker and more graphic versions of the visual novels do exist, and that the final releases were toned down quite a bit. These cuts are known in the community as the Krull versions. While the official releases are romance dramas with options to court the various characters in, you know, standard visual novel stuff, the cruel versions supposedly take a more disturbing turn with significant gore and disturbing outcomes for the characters. 
These versions have been a common rumor among fans of the series since the early 2000s. While some claim that Key themselves made the Krull versions, others claim that these are Dolgens that use the original assets. The latter rumor is accompanied by the claim that only around 50 copies were produced of Air's Krull version specifically, and that Key had taken legal action and confiscated these altered copies. It's said that the cover of the Krull version features an upside-down A in the logo. The Krull version of Air was said to have been created or leaked out of spite by developers that had worked for Key, and this is why Key themselves took direct action and ceased the distribution of them. For this reason, the Krull versions are extremely rare and thought to not exist at all anymore. However, there are also many out there who think that this is some kind of urban legend, nothing more than a creepypasta that's spread around online. The existence remained unconfirmed for years, though these images claiming to be from the Krull version of Air have been floating around online. For decades, these were just rumors and nothing more until January 28th of 2023, when the full Krull version of Canon had been found, uploaded in full to the Internet Archive. The person who found this specific Krull version being YouTuber Base Skater. The Canon Krull version was confirmed to be a Dojin patch, released by a group known as OSI in the year 2000. Now, this specific group also released a patch of air, known as Summer Solstice. Base Skater also provided this patch to Archive.org. While Canon Cruel does have disturbing themes, no such content is found in the Summer Solstice version of Air. So, while half of the urban legend was in fact deemed true so far, the Cruel version of Air still remains lost and its existence unconfirmed. Yippee! Ningu is a 1998 Japanese horror film based on the 1991 Koji Suzuki novel of the same name. While a Western adaptation titled The Ring was produced in 2002, the original film adaptation remains the best known. Now, the Brussels cut was named after its 1999 showing at the Brussels International Festival of Fantastic Film in Belgium. This cut has been described by those who saw it as significantly more graphic than the original Japanese release, specifically when concerning the open mouth effects of the victims, as they were made to appear more deformed. What's interesting is that three years following these viewer testimonies, the 2002 adaptation would feature open mouth effects just like what was described by the audience at that Brussels showing. Existence of the Brussels cut remains unconfirmed, and the only known showing of this graphic cut remains that European premiere in Brussels. It's been said that the viewers of this Brussels cut especially praised these new visuals, and for this reason, they were utilized in 2002's The Ring. Now, what of the Brussels cut of the original Ringu, and the disturbing new effects it supposedly included? Following this 1999 showing, this cut was never shown again. Many deny the existence of this cut entirely, though, feeling it's just an out-of-control urban legend. Hideo Nakata, the director of the original Japanese film, was asked about the Brussels cut on multiple occasions. Every time, Nakata denied any such version existing. Despite this, the viewers of that 1999 showing still swear that the version they saw was definitely more disturbing. This large number of testimonies keeps some from outright dismissing its existence. In the years to follow, some claim to have seen the Brussels cut on Spanish and British TV. The validity of such claims remains up for debate. So then, why would the director deny its existence? Well, some theorize that Nakata made these changes without some kind of necessary approval, or that he was trying to hide the existence of the cut for some other reason. Some even speculate that the changes were made by someone else without the approval of Nakata himself. Perhaps someone tampered with this specific European copy. For now, the Brussels cut remains a popular rumor as no proof of the cut existing has been found. No still images, no footage from the Brussels showing, nothing. Lo 
looked through Mystery Solving Variety Escape Game Dero, more commonly known as just Dero, is a Japanese game show that aired from 2009 to 2011. The show follows an escape room style obstacle course that changes with each episode. The show aired on Nippon Television during its primetime slot, however, was swiftly cancelled in 2011 despite its popularity. For the cancellation was not due to low ratings, but grim similarities between the show's content and real-world events taking place at the same time. Like I said, the rooms and obstacles in each episode changed frequently. So, neither the viewer nor the contestant could determine what the next one would involve. There was a common theme of rooms that would cave in or fill with water, though. On Dero's final episode air, a brief teaser for the next episode was shown. This episode would ultimately never air, as the 2011 Pohoku earthquake and tsunami would occur before the intended air date. While the variety show itself was lighthearted in nature, people laughing over simulated floods and collapsing walls would be extremely grim and an extremely poor taste following such a tremendous disaster. Especially since, at this point in time, many victims of the quake and tsunami remain missing and unaccounted for. Because of Dero's swift cancellation, that unaired episode remains lost, and only the brief preview remains. The image you see before you became a bit of a meme, due to the crude nature of the drawing and awful circumstances that led this image to come about in the first place. It's been posted all over the Japanese internet for over 20 years now. What you see before you is a screenshot taken from a news broadcast. And that drawing? It's claimed to be a sketch of a man responsible for awful reoccurring crimes that had taken place over 2003, according to the screen cap itself, as well as its earliest known post on Tuchan. Because the only media recovered of this broadcast is the still image itself, that's all we have to go off of regarding what's going on and who the sketch is supposed to be of. Let's start with the Archive Tuchon post. Dated October 10th of 2003, the post itself just reads the criminal's face, with an arrow pointing to a link to the image itself. Now, as far as that image itself, there are a few clues found with that on-screen text. At the top right, there's a bulletin that reads, Another robbery has occurred. Those in white uniforms have been targeted. Beneath that, with the red backdrop, reads, Seven consecutive incidents. That text on the side reads, Eyewitness drawing of the criminal's face. Those on-screen details given confirm that this is a drawing of an assailant that people should be on the lookout for, and that they have been targeting students in white uniforms, at least seven. It's also assumed that this all had occurred in 2003, given the timing of the image's emergence online. And, of course, this image has been passed around quite a bit, too. There are many blogs and web pages that contain the image, but unfortunately, many of these blogs are now down, with many unarchived. Now, some online were able to find multiple reports of female students being stabbed by unknown individuals over 2003. Whether this culprit or culprits was ultimately caught isn't known, though. So, for years and years, many simply remembered this image as just a funny meme not getting the entire story due to the original broadcast being lost. Footage of this broadcast has yet to surface. Fist of the North Star, known in Japan as Hokuto no Ken, is among Japan's most prominent and influential and iconic anime and manga series. It's one of my personal favorites. It's especially known for its Mad Max aesthetic and macho style of characters that pretty much define that era. Let's just say Fist of the North Star is not a happy-go-lucky slice of life series. Aside from, well, well, not that, we, we don't talk about that. As a matter of fact, I'm here to tell you that it is quite violent. So when the manga began its adaptation into anime in 1984, done by Fuji TV, a well-known animation studio, some censorship was definitely done. Despite that, it was still very gory and very popular among the masses. 
Now, two years later, in 1986, Toei Animation released a full-length feature film to theaters throughout Japan. Because this film was to be shown in theaters, it didn't have to follow the strict TV guidelines. This is something they especially took advantage of, with the animators reportedly studying human anatomy to make sure the gore was as realistic as possible. The intention of this film, one that provides a retelling of the first story arcs of the manga, was to create something faithful to Tetsuo Hara's art in the original source material. Meaning it was really gory. So anyways, The Fist of the North Star film premiered on March 8th of 1986. While the film was praised by fans, Toei soon became overwhelmed with complaints regarding the extreme violence and gore. So many people complained that, allegedly, Japan's diet became involved in enforcing censorship for this movie. Toei Animation was essentially forced to hastily censor every scene deemed too much. This resulted in many scenes being blurred, shaded, or cut out entirely. The home video release did not arrive until two full years later in 1988. This was because of all the censorship work that needed to be done on the film. And among the biggest changes noted in the home video release was that the ending was completely changed and reanimated. The original theatrical version had shown Kenshiro, the main protagonist, falling unconscious. The new ending, however, still had Kenshiro upright and conscious as the film ends. While the original ending to the film, the one with Kenshiro unconscious, was used in various foreign language releases, and was eventually provided on the 2008 Japanese DVD release, most of the uncensored gore scenes remain lost. That original uncensored cut of the film was only ever shown in Japanese theaters. It's unknown if Toei even possesses the uncensored cut of the film nowadays. The original cut could be lost or even destroyed at this point. Some even claim that an uncensored version doesn't even exist to begin with, as some online users claiming to have seen the original Japanese release in theaters have surfaced over the years, stating that censorship was present in theaters. This is all a bunch of hearsay though, and there isn't any proof of uncensored scenes existing. Or is there? Behold the Italian VHS release of the film. This specific home video release, and no others, contains three uncensored scenes. This proves that these scenes, at the very least, were censored later on. So why does this Italian release have uncensored scenes to begin with? It's theorized that this VHS release used a draft of the film that had yet to be censored. In addition, some theatrical trailers have been shown to include uncensored scenes that would later become censored. Now, the only way we can definitively prove the existence of an uncensored theatrical cut would be to obtain a copy of the film shown in theaters in 1986. And some have popped up online over the years. The uncensored cut was supposedly shown at a movie theater in Maryland in 2015 as well, but no footage of the event can be found. As of right now, that original theatrical cut remains lost and ultimately unconfirmed. This image isn't particularly disturbing unless you can read the caption. And think a bit about the circumstances behind it. Circumstances so potentially concerning that a search for the lost news footage has been underway for some time now. This image has been pretty well known in Japan as a meme since around 2009. The meme itself is called Sensei to Futari de Kimashita, or My Teacher and I Did It Together. It's named that because that's what the little girl in the screenshot is supposedly saying. The outlandish caption with the girl being interviewed is seen as humorous on the Japanese internet, but some question the source of the image. Was the girl really saying that? Because that would be highly concerning if that turned out to be the case. This location is fairly remote as well, with some kind of waterfall in the background. Why the girl was out there and who she was with also became a topic of discussion. Because if this screenshot is genuine, something pretty sinister could be at play here. Furthermore, why would the news outlet broadcast such an interview? The only definitive way to confirm all of this was to locate the original footage. The caption at the top left of the screen says summer days across the country, so the time of year and purpose of this interview is clarified a little bit through that. 
Because the image has been around for about 15 years now, it's also known that the report likely aired before 2009, or during 2009. The location filmed has been speculated to be Kegon Falls in Tochigi, a prefecture north of Tokyo. Possibly the biggest find in the search that has occurred so far was this. A version of the screenshot without the suspicious quote at the bottom. This suggests the possibility of the image with the caption underneath being edited, and not the original image to begin with. This could also be a frame of the broadcast before or after the quote was shown on screen. Lastly, this Twitter post from 2020 in response to someone using the image as a reaction to a manga panel with interesting dialogue claims to have the real story behind the screenshot. The image provided is a 2019 comment from a post made to Warl.club, which seems to be a popular BuzzFeed-type webpage. According to this 2019 commenter, they knew the story behind this because of the job they had with the production that conducted the interview. This commenter apparently talked to the girl themselves. They say the interview took place around 10 years ago, marking it from around 2009, and that the girl pictured was part of her school photography club. This club supposedly only had three members in total, with the other two unable to make the trip due to health and family reasons. The teacher asked the girl if they should cancel the trip, but the girl insisted on going still. Then there's the last bit at the bottom saying the teacher themselves was quote-unquote young and bald, and that nobody watching the interview would find the two suspicious because the teacher was young and bald. So the news channel went ahead with the interview. Now, take all of this with a grain of salt, it's an anonymous comment after all. But if it is true, then a lot of context is missing from that original broadcast. There's probably additional footage with the supposed young, bald teacher, I would assume. Nothing will be definitively clarified or confirmed without the original broadcast footage, however. Yume Nikki, or Dream Diary, is a name passed around a lot in the anime, JRPG, and Japanese gaming communities. If you're unfamiliar with Yume Nikki, here's a little breakdown. Yume Nikki is technically an adventure game, one created with RPG Maker, more specifically RPG Maker 2003. Despite the game's age, it's popular and beloved today, particularly for its surreal visuals and cryptic story that people still discuss and interpret in different ways nobody really knows what this game is actually about. There are a few theories tied to this game's story, which involves a girl in her room who has elaborate dreams. The game itself involves physically accessing these dreams and exploring them, and they become more hostile and bizarre as the game goes on. Yume Nikki is now playable on Steam as well as smartphones, but initially gained a cult following as a PC game on Windows. Especially as the game was heavily discussed on Tuchan, as the forums help get the word out and promote the game through word of mouth. So, while the game has been available online since 2004, the final update was made in 2007. Nowadays, that final version is the one that most have played. There's actually a fan translation of the final version. Nine other versions of the game do exist, being updated over 2004 and 2005. But most content from these early versions are lost. As a matter of fact, the first three versions are lost entirely, and they could have varied greatly from the final released version. Remember how I said the story of Yume Nikki is very cryptic and not fully understood? Well, some believe that the earlier versions were more clear in the narrative's intentions, and could possibly shed light on the meaning behind the game and why it was created in the first place. This image could possibly be the earliest incarnation of the main character's bedroom, found on the game creator's My Sound profile page. The early days of Yume Nikki are poorly documented due to its quiet initial release and most discussion being anonymously on Tuchan. Aside from a freeware magazine providing some versions in a promotional CD-ROM, a lot of this content could be lost entirely now. Kikiyama, the creator themselves, is known to be extremely private only being interviewed one time by Undertale creator Toby Fox, of all people. This interview was provided on Toby Fox's column for Famitsu magazine. The interview reveals that Kikiyama wanted to continue updating Yume Nikki beyond that 2007 build, but wasn't able to get around to updating the game again. 
Aside from this, Kikiyama has never elaborated anything further and lives a very private life. Nobody even knows their true identity. The only clues in deciphering the story of Yume Nikki could lie in those early versions. And those early versions may be lost entirely now. This video, posted 15 years ago, is well known for its uncanny and disturbing visuals. The video itself is an upload of the 2003 song Why You Never Became a Dancer by English noise band White House. The upload itself was not by White House, but by a user known as Acid Blood Infusion, who has uploaded a few unsettling things over the years. For years, many wondered where the video playing on screen came from and who the girl herself is. This left many speculating for years, with no direct answers from the uploader. While this video is seen as an unofficial music video for Why You Never Became a Dancer, the video itself has no affiliation with White House. In addition, no images came up when people had attempted a reverse image search searching for the face. The video is clearly of a photo altered to look like it's moving, so the source would be the unaltered still image. That source image remained lost for many years. In 2023, a search had started on the Japanese side of the internet as well. On the blog of the Tubido, a viewer had mailed in this image, saying they saw it within a book detailing the Okubo incident, which was a string of murders that occurred in 1971. While the original photo was found, no further information was provided until June 15th of 2023. When Reddit user Ian E. Campbell 77 came across the book the source image had originated from. Their post shared that the book itself discussed the Japanese serial murderer Kiyoshi Okubo and the eight murders they committed in 1971. Among the eight victims was a woman named Reiko Takemura. This is the identity of the woman in this photo. Okubo was arrested and sentenced to death in 1973. How this image was discovered and ultimately ended up on that YouTube video remains unknown. This is Chompy. Real Soccer Stardust stands. Um, say hi to Chompy in the comments. Anyways, it's that time again in the video. Um, If you're unfamiliar, this is the point in the video where I read out my Patreon shoutouts. There's a few perks in my Patreon, among them is an on-screen shoutout, but you can also get the, you know, the verbal shoutout, what I'm, what I'm here to do right now. There's also a Discord server, um, early access to videos, some Patreon exclusive videos, some Patreon cuts of videos that are on here. If you're into that, then I would appreciate it if you check it out, but you don't have to. I appreciate any kind of support. Oh, hello. I got my names here. All you wonderful people who support my channel and help me do what I do. Anyways, huge, massive, tremendous thank you to Gio Wo, Aiden Sexton, Roberto Madrigal, J-Man, Keith Bailey, David Lawrence, Hozonkai, Erlen Nyflot, Gabriel, Connor McLaughlin, Jordan May, Shelfie, Stephen Bride, or Stephen Bride, Carlos D. Stevens, Everlurker1999, Creepy Leany, Bill Baker, Gina Britton, Luke Brown, Pigpen, Layla Bloom, Jose Santana, I, I think I said it right this time, Lizard Queen 27 Newt Newt Fruit Shoot, Henry Costanza, Hex Maniacana, Chito Okay. Jeremiah BLR 322 32232 I, I, I forget the sequence of numbers every time Rora Morasso Lena SD98 Pada Meek Beebles 32 Sidnep with, with three piece three Josiah Daroka or Josiah Daroka Nicole Turkowski Akali Mike Master Red Hoodie 50 Mr. Anderson Iggs Brandon Tran Eels C Chameleon Digital Dubs Shivam Fashi Hand Fried Life Jacket Awareness Stagio VGM or just VGM Anegra J Reese Argua Bill Leon X8 Christopher Valencia PP Pacas PP P Pass C Tag C Tag I, I honestly, to this day, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but I hope I'm doing a good job. Angela Pena, VHS Vitch, Airfire, Grand Tactician, Femgirl Erin, Soko, and Bishonen Knife. Once again, thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. You guys are great. Um, and yeah, I will see you in the next video. Trying to get more frequent uploads. So thank you for being patient with me on this one. It's kind of a long video. I've been 
making some pretty long videos lately. But yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. He, he has stubby, he has stubby arms. He can't really wave, but bye for now.